Good evening. How is everybody tonight? Bless and highly favor we decree it in Jesus' name. For we hurt somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a good night to die. Thank you, Master. You know, a word says something. In fact, it says a lot of things. Hallelujah. But one of the things it says, that the Father, the overseer of all things, the creator, searches out individuals that will worship him in truth and spirit. He searches them out. See, there are qualifications to be a true disciple. One of them is to be a true worshiper. That's one of them. You know, one of the other one, there are so many of them, but to trust God all the way through, no matter what, to not rely on yourself, to not be a chaser of the things of the world, but to be a chaser of his presence. Amen? To not worry about nothing. To be anxious for nothing. See, when you're in position, God takes care of it all. He takes care of it all. If you let him. See, the whole thing is, is we got to get out of the way. So he can take care of it. Amen? So many times when your if your hand's in it, his isn't. Hello. True disciples, true. There's a lot of fake ones out there, a lot of pretenders, amen? A lot of wannabes, but not willing to be. And a, as a disciple, he's, a disciple's fully submissive. Doesn't mean he makes mistakes. He's obedient. Obedient in submissiveness, willing to suffer, willing to deny themselves, willing to lay down their life to carry the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. True disciples. Galatians chapter 5. Oh, hallelujah. A true disciple is a patriot of the eternal order. I'm going to say it again. A true disciple is a patriot of the eternal order. And also a patriot of the country God's given them. Galatians chapter 5. And verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom. Freedom. We're freedom fighters. We're river people. Amen? Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom or the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul... Say to you that if you become circumcised, if you become under the law, see there's two laws. There's a law of bondage and there's a law of freedom. Christ will profit you nothing. I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become a strain from Christ, you who attempt to be what? Justified. This law here means letter. You are just trying to justify yourself by the letter. You have fallen from the Spirit or fallen from grace. Does everybody understand that? See, a true disciple is led by the Spirit. A true disciple, when he hears God, he, it's conf he gets a confirmation to make sure it's of God. Never moves without it. One thing you hate is assumption. 
You hate assumption. You want to know absolutes. Amen? Praise God. Verse 5. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness, righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus knew their circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Again, there's the law of bondage versus the law of the Spirit or law of freedom, which is known as grace. I want to share something with you that faith never fails. Hope does. Does everybody get it? Faith never fails, but hope will. Because there can be hope deferred. Amen? Some Proverbs 13 will go there. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13. Faith never fails. That's why the Bible says many will fall from the faith, taking what? He did deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, which you hear all over the place, especially from the media. Those are nothing but prophets of Baal. Proverbs 13, verse 11. Verse 10. Verse 9. No, verse 10. Verse 10. We'll go with verse 10. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's speak it. By pride comes nothing but strife. So pride is a, pride is a promoter of self. Amen. And it's a defender of self. So where there's pride, a person will always justify, complain, or argue to protect self. Even their flawed belief systems. But what the well advised is what? Wisdom. Wealth gained by dishonesty will be diminished. But he who gathers by labor will increase. Hope deferred makes the what? Heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. See, the world is ruled by corruption. It's ruled by Satan's kingdom, deception. But it's corrupt. The whole earth is corrupt. Everything is corrupt. We have been ruled by corruption for so long it's, that it's been long enough now. And in this corruption, they have gained wealth by dishonesty. Amen? They're very prideful. They deceive people. They enslave people. In fact, the world has been enslaved for multiple, multiple, many, many thousands of years. But God's bringing it to an end. In 2 Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter two. Verse eighteen. Is everybody there? For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. While they promise you freedom or liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption, so they want to put you in corruption. They want to make you a slave. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the, than the beginning. That's why more demons come back in access. It says, when it leaves a body, seven more will come back. For it would have been, for, it would have been better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment 
delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and is so having washed to her wallowing in mire. Remember, dog means demonized individual. See, what's happening right now, the elite and so forth, they've promised freedom for all of these years, but they lied. And the whole world and mankind, humanity, has been enslaved in every country, nation, continent, and island globally for multiple thousands of years. Remember, Jesus came to set the captives free. Amen? In Romans 8, 18. But they promised freedom. They promised free this. They promised free that. But they lied to enslave people. Romans 8, 18. But the apostles will say that the true disciples will say, For I consider that the suffering in this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willing because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Everybody sees this. So the world, the ruler of this world who is Satan, his kingdom, the Nephilim race, and those that serve darkness. And many have walked out of the light back into darkness. They're under bondage. They are deceived. They are blinded. They have a form of godliness, but they deny God's power. And they have been taken captive in such an incredible way. Now, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says that in verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groans and labors under the birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our what? Body. For, what? for we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. See, people are looking at what everything is going on and losing hope. They're losing hope because they believe God has abandoned them some places because they let this moron take position. But he really doesn't have position. We'll talk about that in a minute. Welcome to Hollywood. For we are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? Now, even in everything of your life, it doesn't matter what is happening in your life, what you see. What you hear. You could have problems. Your home, your business, whatever. You could have lawsuits against you. you could have, your children can be taken from you. All kinds of things can be happening in your life. But you cannot rely on what you see. That's false hope. You're in faith now. Faith says... My God, my Father is able to complete what and perfect what pertains to me. It can all work to the good, no matter what's going on. And even if something occurs where you think, oh my God, this is terrible, it's still going to work to the good. I never thought it would end this way. It's still going to work to the good. Nothing's ever an end if you're connected to eternity. Amen? When it ends, you're just starting a new beginning. Hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 1. Now there's a process in training to become a true disciple, isn't there? We learn by our what? 
Sufferings. We love to suffer. Come on, your challenges when you resist brings what? Strength. You're getting stronger, not weaker. And if you're dead, you ain't suffering. What's the problem? <laughs> Glory to God. But you don't know my circumstance, and I don't want to. You're dead. Shut up and stay dead. And God will raise you up. <laughs> Second Pete chapter 1. Glory, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge, understanding of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power, his divine what? Power has given to all. All, us, all things. He's given to all. His divine power is given to me and you everything. That pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge and understanding of who he is and who you are in him. Why? Because called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that we hold on by faith. That through these things you may be partakers of the divine nature. Remember. The div nothing can come against the divine. Nothing touches the divine nature. Heaven escaped the corruption that is in the world through what? Through lust. We are pa partakers of the divine nature of the eternal order. You know, comprehend that for a second. Of the eternal order. Not the temporary order. Not what the world says. Not what the government says here. Not what the rulers of this world say here. You and I are a partaker of the divine order of God Almighty who created all things, who holds everything, who was, who is, and who always will be. And nobody's going to move him out of position. Oh, glory. That we might know who we are. John 15. John 15, Gospel of John. Yes, the Gospel of John, not the Gossip of John. Amen? Verse 5. Oh, glory. John 15, 5. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words of life abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. By this my Father is what? Glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my what? Disciples. So a true disciple bears much fruit, doesn't he? Amen? Words of light and life abide to bear fruits of righteousness through the divine nature of the eternal order. We are called his disciples. We've got to stop looking at ourselves in the mirror and allowing the mirror or what people say or your failures or your successes dictate who you are. You're not of this world anymore. And that tearing away and ripping away doesn't feel so good. It's part of your suffering. And you can't go, but, but. Because then it just reactivates all that stuff. You're being torn away constantly and walking away from this world because you're of an eternal order. 
And that's what God is doing right now. He's establishing his eternal order on earth as it is in heaven. Bit by bit. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2. But if you're living in sin, you're in trouble. God will not promote a life of sin. Amen? A true disciple hates sin. A true disciple hates Hates evil. A true disciple exposes sin. Amen. In Second Timothy chapter two and verse one. You therefore, my son, let's speak it, be strong in the grace and the plan that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to Faithful men who are able to teach others. A true disciple is a one who's able to teach. They're faithful. You can count on them. Amen? They're not led by their emotions or make decisions in how they by their emotions. They're led by truth and everything. They deny their emotional desires. You therefore must endure what? Hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He says, no one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of his life. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletic, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. Hello. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you the understanding in all this. Remember that Jesus Christ at the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. And for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Even to the point of chains, but the word is not chained. Therefore I endure all things. Everyone say I endure all things. For the sake of the elect that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Verse 11. This is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind him of these things, charging him before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, gossip, for they will increase to more ungodliness. A true disciple is a soldier to lay down their lives. There are they're, they're not concerned about their reputations, their desires. They're able to walk away from the world into the glory at any time. A true disciple. Romans 8, 28. Hallelujah. In verse 28 it says that, And we know that all things work together to the good, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Again, a true disciple, no matter what you're going through, it's going to work to the good. It's going to work to the good. It's going to work to the good for my benefit. It's going to work to the good. It's going to work to the good. It's going to work to the good. I don't care what the court says. I don't care what the attorney says. I don't care what this person says. I don't care what that says. I don't care what's going to happen. It's going to work to the good for my behalf. As long as I stay in order. As long as I am maintaining my identity. 
as long as I look at the area that we are eternally bound. We're walking in truth. We are servants of the anointing. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are more than conquerors. Amen? All things work to the good. No fear. There's no fear as a third dimensional warrior. A true disciple of Christ. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's go a little further here. It's getting good. <laughs> Verse 29. For whom he what? For knew he also predestined to be conformed into the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. Whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Why? Because all things are going to work to the good. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? If God, it is God who justifies. Who is he who, over, who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercessions for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword or false accusations or... As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. Thank God. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come. Nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God including ex-wives and husbands. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. All things are going to work to the good if you're in position, if you're holding on to faith, if you're not hoping on the things that you see or what you hear. Luke 14. world is such a mess. They have false hope. They've been eating deceptive food. Bringing them fear and bondage. Blindness. Glory. Luke 14. Verse 25. Oh, happy days. Is everybody there? Let's speak it now. Great multitudes went with Jesus, and he turned and he said to them all, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So that will disqualify an individual. That doesn't mean literally hate them. You know what I'm saying? It means that Christ is number one compared to anything else. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost whether he ha has enough to finish it. Lest after he has laid the foundation is not able to finish. All who see it begin to mock him saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Again. He said, we must forsake all. What king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able to, with 10,000, to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else whether the, uh, the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all. That he cannot be my disciple. 
It's a heavy duty request. Forsake all. Forsaking all in this means you're taking your hands out of it. I'm going to stay in position, Lord, because everything's going to work to the good because I'm a true disciple. I live from the future, not from the present. Amen? There's a difference. Forsake all to establish the eternal order of Christ, Jesus, on earth as it is in heaven. That's the only way it can happen. Hebrews 12. Verse 25. Hebrew twelve twenty five. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, <clears throat> much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. <clears throat> Glory to God. Whose voice then what? Shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, God has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. We are in the great shaking, you know. There cannot be a great awakening without a great shaking. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken. As of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may what? Remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear for our God is a consuming fire. Shaking. What's he doing? He's exposing false disciples, separating the false and true disciples. Amen? There are a lot of pretenders out there. Matthew chapter 10. That's why God says, I test the genuineness of your faith. Matthew 10, 24. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he, that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them. Do not what? Fear them. For there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in dark, speak in the light. And what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a what? A sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. Who who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for me, for my sake, will what? find it. Powerful. Disciple is not above his master. Doesn't fear. 
He's complete in Christ. He is going to complete every assignment that's given to him. <laughs> or you will have trouble. 1 John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Verse 18. Is everybody there? Let's sow it. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. I mean, we see them all over the place, amen? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all of these things. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and that no lie is of the truth. He was a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one. He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you've heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you'll also abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. A true disciple is of an abider. Amen? These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you, separate you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it had taught you, you will abide in the anointing that continually teaches you and guides you to all truth. He says, it's the last hour. Many will fall from the faith into false hope. Under false doctrines, doctrines of demons. They will continue relying on what they see. And not in faith. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse 36. Is everybody there? 1336. Let's speak it together. Then Jesus sent a multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. And he answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the what? Wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the what? Is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. Are we coming to the end of the age? Close. Then the Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness. Oh, it's happening. And we'll cast them into Guantanamo Bay, in jail, in prison, and eventually the lake of fire. They will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. The tares and the wheat, they're true disciples and there's a lot of pretenders. Amen? Psalm 11. People need to make choices whether they want to be a true disciple or not. To 
too many of you are still playing the game. Psalm 11. Let's speak it. In the Lord I put my what? I put my what? Yeah. How can you say to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For look, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow on the string, that they may shoot secretly at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can a righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids test the sons of men. The Lord tests the what? Righteous. But the wicked and the one who loves violence, his soul hates. Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone and burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous, he loves righteousness. His countenance upholds the upright. In other words, his face, his light will shine on you. In Matthew 18, or Matthew 8, I'm sorry. Matthew 8. Glory. Verse 18. And when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave a command. A what? A command to depart to the other side. See, what's he saying? Man, you need to cross over. You need to what? Cross over. See, God's, Jesus spoke in so many symbolic meanings. It's phenomenal. But by the Spirit, we'll catch them. Even God right now, through what's going on, in the world, there are symbolic meanings that are being released. But many people aren't catching them. There are symbolic messages that people aren't catching. So they don't know where they're at. They're in darkness. Hallelujah. Verse 19. Then a certain scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then another of his disciples said to him, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Let. <laughs> Hallelujah. What did Jesus say to him? Then <laughs> let what? Follow me. And let the what? Dead bury their dead. This is how you and I look at the world. Let the dead bury the dead. I'm not a part of the dead. I'm a part of the life. Does everybody understand that? The world is dead. The things of the world are death. Everything in this world is promoting death. The only thing that promotes life is God's presence. His word. Other than that, everything else promotes death. Darkness. Deception. Corruption. The world is ruled by corruption and lies. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Let's go to Revelation 12. That's why Jesus said the rule of this world is coming, but he's got nothing in me. That's how God wants us to be. Nothing, the ruler of this world is coming, but he's got nothing in us. Only he is in us is greater than he is in the world. Revelation 12, 7. And here we stand. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. And they did not prevail, nor was there a place found for them in heaven any longer. In other words, in God's presence. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He does what? 
deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has, become, has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in, in them. But woe without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a what? Short time. Now listen, let's go a little further. Now when the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. The woman was known as Israel. Of course, we know it was associated with the mother of Jesus. Amen. But she didn't need two wings. Amen. This is also associated with the rapture because the two wings are associated with Moses and Elijah. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle that she might what? Fly into the what? Wilderness with God. To her place where she is nourished for time, times and a half. That's three and a half years. In other words, this is when you and I are raptured. We are in heaven for three and a half years. And then we will return with the Lord. For the time and times and half time, this three and a half, from the presence of the serpent. Hello. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the what? Rest of her offspring, because he couldn't catch the woman. Who's the woman now? The bride. Who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. See, true disciples, they live out of the box of humanity. They're not caught in the traditions. Amen? They're true to disciples. You know, we are in such a time right now that everything is unfolding. We are seeing more than we've ever seen. We are watching global events. So be strong in the power of his might. Amen. Continue to deny yourself and stay filled, dressed, and possessed with his glory and his love. Father, we thank you for your word and your awakening to us. And we will bring more updated information as it is released and we find it. And we ask, Lord, for your mercies and grace and faithfulness. Protect us, guide us, and seal us for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And I've shared before that this has been a global sting operation by God Almighty. You know, President Grant, when he was president, he stated something very powerful. He said, there's two parties, traitors and patriots. <laughs> we are eternal patriots fighting for freedom of the corrupt sl slavery of regimes of the Antichrist that have been ruling this world. We are in that battle. The elected government was to govern the people that have a voice by the Constitution and Bill of Rights, which are unchangeable, but they keep trying to change them. From the time of the pilgrims and before the world was completely under the rule, not governed. See, government is supposed to govern, not rule. There's a difference. Why? Because people have a voice. Our voices of the people of the world have been shut down everywhere. They've been held slaves to serve the elite. Just like in the days of Pharaoh, in the days of Caesar, where they called themselves gods. That's, they still believe that they're gods now. They're the elite. Amen? Even the Pope false prophet of Luciferian regime from the beginning. People have no idea about the Vatican and the
Catholicism. And there's so many innocent people that have been taken captive in it. But it's ruled by Satan's kingdom. All of these countries, they were formed by corruptive regulations to rule, not to govern. Creating laws they didn't need to obey themselves. I mean, have you noticed that? Hillary should have been assassinated, shot, hung, cooked. You and I did that? Just conspiracy would have thrown the key away. Amen? So look at all the things that is happening where they're not abiding to themselves. They want to create rules and laws, but they don't have to follow them. Because they're the Antichrist kingdom. Amen? Slaves of corrupt corporations. They should all be going to jail. For over the last 50 or 60 years, the United States patriots have been planning a move to dissolve the U.S. of America, which has been incorporated, not republiced. It's been incorporated. It's been ruled by the elite, the Antichrist regimes. And they've been planning this for years to return us back to a republic where we are governed, not ruled. Again, you have a social security number as a stock. Does everybody understand that? So globally, countries are incorporated, not republiced. So people are used as slaves. So they collect the money off of everything they own, their businesses, their stocks, their inventory, their sales, their labor. Everything is collected for the elite. And they use it any way they want. Even though when they tell you stuff and you elect them to put them in office, it don't mean poop. Because they're liars from the beginning. Not every single one of them, 99.9 .9 of them there. Amen? Praise God. So anyways, America has been leading this freedom fight. On January 6, 2020, Donald Trump set an executive order to dissolve the U.S. corporation. Now I want you to understand something. This is phenomenal. And all its laws of corrupt slavery and enforcement. And the, in this, there was a, a signing of the Nasiri Act, which restores this country under the military patriots of justice and righteousness, under the Constitution. This has already occurred. The military communication back channel to avoid the bail democ democratic or demonic media it's called Q. That's why it was established. Allowing the true president and patriots to access one another with true communication. This has been going on. The swamp is too big to drain. It must be destroyed. And replace the corporate laws with true governing laws. Again, we talked about your social security, which collects... Everything you do collects money. Gives it to them. Amen. All corporate fees of businesses, fines, etc. Under the rule of corrupt slavery, just like Pharaoh over the Hebrews for 400 years, has been the same thing. America has been in the same position of slavery, which marks 400 years, November 2020. That means there's a release. And when they left, what did they leave with? The gold, the silver. Is everybody okay? They left with the cattle. We don't need any cattle today. There are three major locations on the earth that rule the earth through their corporate, corp, corp, uh, corrupt, corp, corrupt corporations. The first one is in the Vatican in Italy. The second one is the Central Bank in London. 
And the third one is Washington, D.C. in the United States. They are considered sovereign in their own, their, their, they're not owned by this country. They have their, they're considered their own country. Does everybody understand that? That's why every one of them, they're all surrounded by satanic, <laughs> mystic, and idols of worship paganism. All the logos and statues on them, if you really go into all of these places, you see nothing but paganism over everything. Amen? All three locations have been captured. But the media will not tell you that. They have been captured. By the civilian special military forces that have <laughs> inaugurated Donald Trump as their commander. He was inaugurated with a 21-gun salute in preparation of returning this country under the biblical law of justice. That's the purpose of all of this. They know they're fighting the Antichrist. And under the righteousness, Trump declared the law of the land is the Bible in front of everyone. It's going to be turned back to the law of the land of the Bible. Now, again, most, uh, you know, in, in previous inaugurations, all the presidents got together, amen, the ex-president got there and so forth. You didn't see any of that. Previous presidents are part of this corrupt organization in slavery. While well, they get wealthy from your labor as they worship the owl, which is over the Capitol. That is a Capitol building. That is their center of worship. There are tunnels underneath that go to it, they gather there and they worship Satan. Once a year, there's a, a global elite gathering at the Bohemian Grove to worship the owl and sacrifice a living being or animal every year. They've infiltrated and filmed it. Again, the emphasis on this is to bring the understanding of what's really going on. How long has this been going on? It's coming to an end. There is still a tremendous battle and fight. They are fighting for their lives to hold position. Is everybody okay? Biden is not in the White House. In fact, all of this is nobody's there. All his false attempts to deceive the people is a Hollywood production with executive actions not executive orders. They are called executive actions, not executive orders. They are antichrist political regimes of rule, fed off by greed and power, materialism by human trafficking, slaves as a part of their rituals. Biden had no gun salute. No current president wasn't there to transfer power. None of this occurred. Everything that you see he produces is in a screen. It's in a movie. It's in a studio. He's not in the White House. Does everybody understand this? Everything is being portrayed. You know, when, again, when you talk about Hollywood, Hollywood is, the word Hollywood means it's a witch's stick. It's a supposed. To, it's about deception. Think about this. What is tell a vision? Tell a what? Vision. And what station are you going to turn to to be programmed? All of this was pre-set up to continue to deceive people as they, as Satan's kingdom became more. Um, uh, and technology and so forth in the earth. Silicon Valley is Antichrist. The Pentagon has been, everything's been taken over. What's going to happen is everything is going to get dissolved. There will be no more Congress. They'll have to re put people back in. The military will take over everything. They have 120 days since the signing to get this together. Is everybody okay? An executive order. 
I think it was in 2018 or 19 that Trump signed for all human, inhuman acts of individuals or corporations will lose all assets, properties, bank accounts, and be imprisoned. That means you don't have to empty the swamp. It's going to turn it all over. It will be destroyed. This is a global See, people think that whatever Trump's done is just the United States. No, this is a global act that's been agreed with all of the alliances of all over the world. Even Saudi Arabia. You got to remember, Saudi Arabia's already executed many of their princes and their kings for getting involved in this human trafficking. They don't play over there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Trump's final words to the... <laughs> That he left in his speech, he said, you will see me in another form. Think about that. You will see me in another form. <laughs> he will be the leader of the Patriot Party. It will be established by God Almighty. This is where we're at right now. I want to read you the Nasseri. It's called National Economic Security and Reformation Act. This law forgives credit card, mortgage, and all other bank debts due to illegal banking and government activities. This is what's been signed. Abolishes income tax. Abolishes IRS. Creates flat rate, non-essential, new items, only sales tax revenue for government. Increases benefits to the senior citizens. Returns the constitutional law. Establishes new president and congr congressional elections within 120 days after Nasseri announcement. Monitors elections and prevents illegal election activities or special interest groups. Creates new U.S. Treasury currency. Rainbow currency, they call it. Backed by gold, silver, and platinum precious metals. Returns the constitutional law to all of our courts and legal matters. Initiates new U.S. Treasury bank system in alignment with the constitutional law. Eliminates Federal Reserve System. Restores financial privacy. Restrains all judges and attorneys in the constitutional law. Ceases all aggressive U.S. governmental military actions worldwide. Establishes peace throughout the world initiates first phase of worldwide prosperity distribution of vast wealth which has been accumulating for many decades by who your labor releases enormous sums of money for humanitarian purposes enables the release of new technologies such as alternative energy devices man this is where we're at i mean you and i are alive to watch all of this unfold the Vatican has been captured. There's nobody there either. The Central Bank in London has been captured. Even the, pa what is it, the palace in uh, the, the England, the, the, that's empty. Where the prince and prin whatever, it's empty. It's been captured. It's Who, ha, we? Shurabaka parrahasi. Come on up here, Lucy. Hold on, sister. I just want to clarify a couple of things that he kind of glossed over. We've been under two constitutions. The, the, the original one in 1776, and then there was another one in 18. I don't remember what. But Can you hear her? What happened? So anyway, they made a second constitution at, when they did all the um, central banking and all of that stuff. And um, so it changed the laws so that, for example, our congressmen and women and senators didn't have to be at home where they belong with their constituents. They're all kind of like dwelling in Washington. And because it's now a corporation, they are responsible to the corporation. They are not responsible to the constituents. Okay, so we're trying to get back to where these people are responsible for us. Now, what he said about uh, Hollywood and the stage and everything, the reason he's saying that is because there's visual evidence all over the place, if you want to take the time to look it up yourself, 
The Oval Office has, of course, very many filmings in it of what it really looks like. And then there is an Oval Office on a uh, Hollywood studio yeah. stage. Uh, I think it's in Biden's basement. I'm not sure. And, uh, it, I, don't, I don't know where it is. But anyway, the stuff that they've been shown with Biden, if you look, there are like BMWs in the parking <laughs> lot. There is no parking lot outside the Oval Office, you guys. And the uh, wallpaper on the wall is the same wallpaper that's in all of these Oval Office scenes in the movies. It's a little different than what's really there. And the studio was owned by Mnuchin, who is our Treasury Secretary. So this is all, what they're trying to do is wake up the American people. And things are going to get worse. People are starting to wake up and really realize, uh-oh, you know, these people on the pipeline, they voted some of them, for Biden, and all of a sudden they don't have a job. It's like buyer's remorse. And that's what this alliance of good people are trying to get us to the place where we really realize, you know, number one, we need to be active in our local governments and not allow these things to happen all the way to the top. And number two, is this is all our responsibility. People are grumbling and complaining, but what are you doing about it, right? So anyway, I think that about covers what I thought needed clarifying. So he's not just talking off his hat, okay? This Nasera thing I've known about for years, years and years and years. It was signed by Clinton, by the way. It just hasn't been instituted yet, but it's been signed for a very long time. So things are going to get worse before they get better, but this is where our hope need not be deferred. We know the truth. Amen. 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 Praise God. You know, I think Clinton was held by gunpoint to sign it. But it doesn't matter, he signed it. Because he knew it was going to bite him back, you know. But you see, people have bitten the bait of Satan for so long. People are under deception. Here, but they still don't know what's going on. And, and, and this is where the word says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's the truth. Because you know what? People are just accepting what someone says and never searches it out. There's going to be a lot of people that realize Man, how stupid was I? You know, where they voted for something. Thing, you know, because most people are voting for something because they want something. They're not voting for righteousness and justice. They're voting for a handout. And that's how things get bad. Because they promise all kinds of things, but they can't deliver. It's always happened. Same thing in Iran. The same thing happened to them. Iran was a powerful, wonderful country. People used to love to travel to Iran. Great education, everything. Until it got taken over in dictatorship. They got promised all kinds of free this, that, and that. And the king and queen were taken over and thrown out. Now it's ruled by Satan's kingdom. It's happened all over the world. But I'm telling you, the world is shaking. God is shaking everything right now. And you and I have a responsibility, and that's to pray that prayer for arming America. Warfare prayer. Yes, dear. If you want to look any of this stuff up, like Nasera, for example, don't Google it. Google has pictures of Nasera. Yeah. 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 They've got alternative search engines like DuckDuck. What's the other one? DuckDuckGo. Duck, There's a lot of them. Anyways, we'll make comp I can, we can make copies of this and get it to you. But I, we want you to stay updated. Amen? We want you to be awake so what's going on, no matter what you hear out there, whatever, this, that, whatever. And we want you to maintain your faith that everything's going to work to the good. God's got the last say, let me tell you. And we got to allow him to have the last say, not only in our personal life, but in the life of this country. And everything that we do. You know, America is God's hand. Israel turned it over to us, but it's going to go back to Israel. But we will be the two countries and the other alliances that will battle against the Antichrist. Look how many ch um, uh, treaties have been signed in Israel. God directed through Donald Trump right now. There's already five or six or seven of them already signed already. These are all tree peace treaties among their own people in the Middle East. That's never happened. 
The embassy of the United States is in Israel. That's never happened. There's so many things that have never happened. You know, in Jerusalem. Yeah. My conscience over there. <laughs> Thank you, dear. <laughs>